Hello, Dr. David Blyweiss again at Smack Boca, Functional Medicine Director. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was to explain in a little bit more detail about leaky gut. Um, we, we touched on that with autoimmune diseases um, beginning in the gut. Um, people don't need to get an autoimmune disease to have leaky gut. Uh, you do have to have leaky gut in most instances in order to get the most common autoimmune diseases. But what I explain to patients when they come in with um, their symptomatology, whether it's bloating, gas, um, alternating um, bowel habits, a uh, host of things, gastroesophageal reflux, dyspepsia, things that we're finding more and more in our stressed out, um, fast food, over-the-counter, take a pill, get better society. And when we see leaky gut in, in patients, and there's many ways we can test for that, which is another whole, another whole video. Um, classically, we will do the 4R or 5R program, which is initially we're going to remove the offending organism or organisms, um, including parasites, protozoa, um, opportunistic bacteria, and many people, there is yeast, fungi, classically candida. So we will, remo we will remove that. We can remove that with either an appropriate antibiotic or antifungal, depending on the testing of, of the uh, organism uh, from the culture and sensitivity. We can also use uh, botanicals. If you are against using an antibiotic to get rid of something, say you have candida, we can put you on an anti-candida diet, which is restrictive of no sugars, whether they're uh, refined sugars or even uh, mushrooms, refined white flour, white rice, etc. cetera. Um, but we'll give you those botanicals we know will kill the, the yeast, whether it is olive leaf extract, uh, oregano oil, whatever it is. Uh, so if you don't want to take an antibiotic or an antifungal, you don't really have to. You should know it may take a little bit longer to get rid of it, but we can still get rid of it. So we'll remove the offending uh, agent. Uh, then what we're going to do is we will replace those digestive enzymes that classically we see you don't have. Sometimes it is due to your taking Prilosec or Nexium or some purple pill or other proton pump inhibitor or H2 blocker like Tagamet Zantac and you don't begin the digestive process because you don't have the hydrochloric acid to do so. So we will replace the digestive enzymes. It may be betaine, pepsin, hydrochloric acid. It may be pancreatic digestive enzymes. But the second R is to replace those digestive enzymes that we all need in order for your GI tract to work. Um, third thing, the third R is re-inoculate. What are we re-inoculating you with? Probiotics. Antibiotic against life. Probiotic for life. When you have a bowel that's not working well, it's dysbiotic, like dysfunctional. So we give you a, a mixed probiotic, not just one. Interesting, interesting moment here. People will say, aren't all probiotics the same? Here I got one from the store. And I'll say, well, it's not sufficient that it's a probiotic. Um, dogs are canines. Um, if you want to go into the jungle and hunt lions, you can go with a Rhodesian Ridgeback dog. Or you can take another dog, a uh, Chihuahua, but that dog's not going to hunt. It's going to be the Rhodesian Ridgeback. So it's not enough that you have a probiotic. You want the right probiotics. You want a mixture. You want a minimum of 20 to 50 billion colony-forming units at the time that you're taking it. It's one of those things you have to read the bottles. You don't want to see at time of manufacture. Manufacture could have been months ago. What about when you take it? You want it at the time that you take it. Um, if you can get mixed probiotic, those names you may recognize, Lactobacillus acidophilus, Bifidobacter infantis. There's other things you can add to that. And one of the things we like, I like, um, is the good yeast, Saccharomyces boulardii. Part of the family, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, from which we make beer, cerveza, Saccharomyces boulardii not only allows the probiotic to maintain itself, to stick in your gut, but also raises certain levels of an immunoglobulin that we need in our gut, serum immunoglobulin A. So we've now um, removed, replaced, re-inoculated, and now we want to repair the lining of the gut. And you repair the lining of the gut multiple ways. I like to do it with a medical food shake, your choice, chocolate, vanilla, chai tea, uh, that you can take twice a day and will have in it glutamine, 
which is the main energy source uh, for the gut, um, as well as curcumin, which is a massive uh, anti-inflammatory, and we'll add fish oils. And eventually, over a period of a week or so, you'll begin to see healing of the lining of the gut. You do turn over the, the interior lining of the gut about every five days or so, so that if you are healing it and you're not eating the foods that you shouldn't eat and you're taking your probiotics, classically, most people who come in with gastrointestinal complaints won't have those same complaints within a few weeks. Um, and the next thing you do is to rebalance it. You want to eat well, you want to have nutrient-dense, whole foods, organic if you can get it, um, and enjoy eating. Just eat the right things and take care of your gut. It'll take care of you. Most of your immune system is in there. Um, again, when people say they have a gut feeling or their gut told them something, they really should listen to it.